you can quote me on that. Three months later, it's just gonna be up from here. Oh my god. <laughs> I hope I hold up. Okay, don't like six months later, everything goes shit, and then like, they replay this clip. <laughs> Hey. Wow, I What's feel up? like, oh, I don't know. I, I feel like this is a good week, man. Like, I feel like we're finally getting some good news. And 2020, I know we're at the tail end, but like finally we are ending on a like an upward trajectory. Do you feel that? Uh, it's, it's a brand new day. Yeah. New hopes. Like for once, <laughs> like, you're yeah, right. Like, it feels like we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, especially with... Um, the news on the vaccine it doesn't feel like it's being promoted as much as i thought it would be like big headlines and stuff but it feels like very 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 good news so maybe it's not people are still being quite cautious about it but mm. the fact that we have a vaccine is amazing they're still doing safety tests and all that right and then i think singapore on our side like we've promised uh, or at least the government has promised that by early 2021 we ought to have some form of vaccine as well like we're oh really, really going on our, our own that belongs to Singapore. You know, they're quite cautious about saying these things, but they're saying Singapore could have a COVID-19 vaccine by early 2021. Mm. And of course, we've been spending like close to 300 million uh, to make and buy the vaccine. I mean, I, I do think that with Pfizer already finding a vaccine, mm. even though there are all the limitations like with the temperature and stuff, uh, we're getting close lah. We're getting close Actually, to Actually, it doesn't feel like much of a limitation. Eh? Honestly, because like reading it, right? Okay, so for people mm. who don't know, Pfizer just announced that they have a vaccine that is in like the last stage of trial, lah, you know? And so far, it's been very promising because nobody has gotten any side effect. The effectiveness has came back at 90%, which is even higher than our normal flu vaccines, which usually... Yeah range around 60-70%. So they were actually thinking that the vaccine will come at 50-60% effectiveness, but this is at 90 Like they are already going to start to push it out like end of November in the US. And they are saying that by next year, like January, it will be widely available at least in the US. So I would assume that that means there are going to be more that are created and sent all over to the world. Yeah, we're getting there, guys. It's like, it just, I guess at this point, like, just want to left out anything that's even remotely positive. I think that's, that's the sort of attitude we should take. I feel like people days. are a bit worried to like celebrate because it's 2020. And also like, I think like the government and the media are a bit wary of pushing it out because they are worried that people will think that like, oh, then don't need mas mask anymore. We don't need mm -hmm. social. But actually a lot of experts have came out to say that uh, we we need to still be careful and everything lah. But come on, guys, this is a vaccine, right? It's like a huge win, right? Like at least okay, yeah. the, mar the 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 stock market is like rising, you know, like oh, yeah, airlines and crews are yeah. like up 30 percent in a day. Eh. That's like wow, wow record breaking. Uh. So to me, I feel like it's gonna be upwards from here. Oh my god, <laughs> I hope I hope oh. Okay, don't like six months later, everything goes shit, and then like they replay this clip. <laughs> no lah, no la. I mean, I think we all want the best, but you're right. I think yeah, everyone's just being a little bit cautious before mm. we celebrate, but let's just try to take some of the good. I mean, what happened over the weekend, I don't know. I mean, at least for me, I'm, I'm really glad like Biden won the elections. It feels like a, a brand new day for America as well. And of course, whatever affects America affects us and the rest of the world too. Lah. So that is something to celebrate as well. And of course, the markets, like you said, have rallied. So I'll take whatever I can get at this point. Like anything positive yeah. is, is good. Lah. Mm. So everybody is like very... Okay, so US elections, obviously, is the huge news, right? And and then it was such a nail biter. It almost like, <laughs> it feels like a sports game. Uh, and then like everybody's congratulating Biden and everything. And like, how do you feel about the whole, whole election as, as a, like a Singaporean girl watching from outside? I'm just really glad that Trump is out more, even more than just being like congratulating Biden. It's more like, yes, I'm just glad Trump is out. I feel like it can't get any worse than this. Lah, so it can only go uphill from here. Then what's, what's your thought on it? First of all, I mean, America's very divided. Yeah. <laughs> You look at the polls and everything, it's quite scary, right? I mean, like yeah. all the news media are blasting like, oh, Trump is an asshole, Trump has done this, uh, yeah. horrible, horrible. Maybe like what we are hearing, it's from our own bubble, right? Like from our the news outlet that we have chosen and all from our friends that have any experience in the States, right? But maybe they are all just more democratic than they are. I mean, they are all more Democrats than they are Republicans. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I also feel like when I went to look at all the news outlets, it just feels like everybody's ganging out on Trump. Lah. Okay, look, I'm not a Trump supporter. Okay, if anything, he has proven himself quite an asshole and a very childish prick with the post-election results and everything. Yeah, like, 
concede defeat. Come on. Yeah, like, okay. He's behaving like a spoiled brat. Lah, okay. But I also have to say, I feel now Trump has like fake news, fake news. He always says fake news, right? But like, I feel now like, yeah, he's actually right to quite an extent because these news outlets, they are not neutral at all. You know, I feel like just because an asshole, he's an asshole doesn't mean you have the right to be an asshole to him, right? Because that means your reporting is not neutral. And I don't like it. Like, I, don't, I feel very uncomfortable knowing that like, oh, they all have an agenda. They are all pushing for like, oh, like they want Biden to win and they're all pushing this. And then they're all like, honestly, if you look at policies and stats and numbers and everything, right? Like, like Trump's administration are not doing that badly. Really, eh, they are not. And if you compare them to like what the last administration was doing, right, I wouldn't say, okay, there are a lot of elements. I'm not a politician. I'm not an expert in politics and everything. I'm just looking at the research and the data that I, 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 I'm seeing. And I just feel that actually, like this, this kind of numbers, if you give it to anyone that is not so much an asshole, like he'll probably not get into so much trouble. So like people really hate him. And, but I almost feel like that's not really a reason for like all the media to gang out on him and not like, push news that is like like they just don't want to talk about things that are good about him and they don't want to talk about things that are bad about Biden and, and their campaign I feel like huh, like why like that not even yeah. just in the US like or just like the vast majority of news outlets lah. like it feels like yeah. I guess but that's I guess what you're saying is it's politics is politics but the news outlets shouldn't get involved because they've yeah. obli- obviously taken sides in the US you know we have nowhere near as exciting politics but even mm. then like our own news outlets they do try to give both sides like when Wait, we what? Have, you say our they news try, they try beyond uh, mainstream media right we have like social media right but okay. what you're saying is that you, our mainstream media they try to be impartial but there's always a slant right and the good thing i guess it's good and bad is that now people have a voice too right so there's mm. social media so even though your big outlets like fox and all that have their own agenda like people are also able to give their own opinions. So I would just encourage people as always to read more than one source uh, of information. Mm. I, I mean, honestly, we are, I'm talking way above my, my weight class. Lah, you know, like all these things, are, it goes very in depth and everything. And I, I'm not even like close to qualified, lah, but that's the overall um, feeling that I'm getting. And I think it's rubbing off us lah, because uh, recently our uh, prime minister also made a speech, right? Like I think yesterday. Congratulating Biden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulating Biden, yes, but also talked about like the status of our uh, politics in Singapore. Maybe off the back of the US elections, I feel like it's almost like been a catalyst. Mm-hmm. So I think he, okay, the good thing is he, he kind of uh, acknowledged that people are not super happy, lah, right? He said like he acknowledged that Singapore is changing and that the party cannot stand still. That Singaporeans still want stability, progress, job security, opportunities, but as Singaporeans, we want other things too that maybe previous generations didn't hold as important. So that includes like being able to participate more actively in helping to shape society. Uh, Singaporeans are calling for more checks and balances. There's definitely a call for more alternative voices and um, increasingly people are scrutinizing government policies. Right? So he's acknowledged that these will grow with every generation and that uh, the party must continue to represent all and not just a segment of the population. Like my ear on the ground, like a lot of people disagree with this, but ah, really? um, like some, there's some toxic okay. things in there that is not changed. Okay. Yeah, it's not been addressed. Uh, he also talked about the elections and mm. he said that the election results were short of their expectations, but he was not surprised about oh, okay. it. Right? He, he never expected it to be a landslide victory. Mm. I think he's also, but then also there's a clear, there's a clear messaging. I think it's a, like a nod to the US politics, uh, the political situation recently. Mm. So he just also mentioned that Singapore's political stability has allowed them to deliver progress. And he actually used the word that having more exciting politics and more fiercely contested democratic systems can have detrimental results, right? So then he asked straight up, do we want such excitement in Singapore? In a clever way, I don't know if that's what our PM is trying to tell us is that Democracy is not a foolproof method as well, in a way. Like, mm. you know, because, and I, I mean, I don't know what better system there is. I also am punching above my weight here, right? Mm. Like for the US, the way that they elect their president is quite, you know, basically you don't have to win like a majority of states. You just need to win the correct ones, the correct number of seats. Almost everything he said, like what a Singaporean wants, right? It's what I feel 
um, I want or a lot of my friends, like what we want, you know, like more transparency, check and balances yeah. and everything more than like a completely different direction. Like it's like these few key elements that it's really bugging us, you know, like, yeah. yeah. So I feel like he understands that. So it's okay. quite heartened to hear that they, he knows. And he even addressed that like they are very lacking in social media. Yeah. They actually said that and they spend quite a lot of time on that, you know, which is true. You yeah. know, they are lacking quite a lot on social media, which is also f- like a sign that say that they are a bit out of touch with the people, lah, I feel. Mm. So um, like it's very nice for him to hear that and that, that they are going to work on that. Uh, he's actually quite a bit of a pep talk. <laughs> it feels like quite a bit of a pep talk to like the, his, his guys in, 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 in government. We have always demonized um, like true democracy and US like not just us yeah. like, okay a lot of countries like oh democracy uh, you look at them so messy uh, two party system and everything okay to me right I feel like there is a certain part of democracy that is messy doesn't make it bad and then you ask me the next question like do I really want this kind of messiness in Singapore mm. like, my answer is no la. <laughs> still like I don't want it to be that messy but I do think yeah. we can have a bit more mess. You know, we can have a bit more. We can have wait, a bit wait, more leeway. Wait, wait, you want it to be la. messy? You don't want it to be messy, but you think we can have a bit more mess. I'm confused. Yeah. Okay. I don't want it to be as messy. Okay. So let's say we are, now we are at like. Okay. 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 You can. You you can complain. You can say I want the best of both worlds and everything. Okay. All I'm saying is that actually what he's saying now is the same thing, right? You want more transparency, more strong opposition, more discourse, and everything. And this is basically what he's saying, and which is basically making it slightly which is making it less, more messy, correct? Because like mm-hmm. a lot of debates, it takes time, people have opinion, yeah. and when people have opinion, it's a bit messier. So I feel this is the right direction and I actually want to go in this direction more. I also see his point of view by saying that like, you know, this true democracy, it is very messy. There's a lot of pitfalls and a lot of dangers, a lot of yeah. traps that we have to be aware of. Um, and I see I see that point of view as well. That's, that's what I'm saying. Cannot, clear or not? Clear enough. Clear la, clear la. I took his speech positively as well. I okay. feel like that. Uh, I, I don't know why there's suddenly this surge in like talking about it. Like I said, maybe it's also off the back, like the catalyst of the US elections, maybe they're actually hearing people comparing it because inevitably you would compare it to your own country, country. right? Like, yeah. yeah. So I think that hopefully if off the back of this, they really make the effort to uh, really look into this and really make some actual changes, then it's great. Like. But I, mm. I also take the whole thing positively. I think this actually fits in very nicely to our Brand new brand day. New day. Yeah, brand new day and, in Singapore as ending, well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I, I wouldn't say like we're ending 2020 on like, yeah, like we're like all, you know, like it's all positive ahead, but it feels like like I said that at least we are moving into an upward trajectory. Like I, things are looking I, up. Honestly, right? I feel like it's just gonna be up from here. <laughs> you can quote me on that. Three months later, it's just gonna be up from here. This is like the only time, right, that I actually don't want to disagree with you. Okay. <laughs> Like I actually, for once, hope that you are proven right. That is like the first time. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll catch up with you next week. Hopefully more good right, news. Man. And yeah, man. more like positive things we can talk about. Cool. All right, man. I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye.